think when we had the Omicron wave come through, that was uh, the pandemic showing us its last hurrah, uh, showing us what the future will look like. Essentially, Omicron was a virus that had the capacity to infect people who had been infected or vaccinated before. Once you have a virus like that, you know that this is a disease that is going to become endemic and that this is going to be like coronaviruses do, a virus that continues to evolve. So I think it is appropriate now to call this an ongoing pandemic and not think about it as a post-pandemic period. Hybrid immunity is fantastic. What it is doing now is allowing us to not get severe disease when we get infected. So this has come from vaccination and infection in the population. And particularly if we've had an Omicron infection, we don't seem to get sick with Omicron very easily after that. It isn't quite the same for everybody. For older individuals, Omicron can be a very serious issue. But in general, for the rest of the population, once you have hybrid immunity, you are in a really, really good place. The virus will continue to evolve. That's what viruses do, because if they have to infect people, they have to be able to overcome the immunity that we have at that time. That doesn't mean that, you know, when the virus evolves, it will necessarily make us sick again. It's kind of okay to keep getting infected and boosted naturally. I think it's very important for everybody to understand that there is no drug or, and no vaccine that we can say is 100% safe. But for vaccines, the safety bar is very high. You have to demonstrate that the benefit of the vaccine greatly outweighs the risk of the vaccine because vaccines are given to healthy people. Uh -huh. That's why I think it's really important to have a strong safety surveillance system because if you recognize that there is a vaccine-related problem, then you can manage that problem appropriately, quickly, and reduce the chances of long-term damage. So, for example, with Covishield, you can have thrombosis with thrombocytopenia syndrome. Now, those thrombotic events, if they are recognized early, can be managed quickly and the person who has that event won't die. If we leave it alone and we don't recognize it as a problem is when mortality really increases and that's when we begin to have messaging to say that these vaccines are completely unsafe. They are not completely unsafe. They do have a risk and we need to recognize that risk and act on it. So far, there is no evidence that COVID-19 vaccines trigger autoimmune diseases. It is a possibility, and the only way we can address this is making sure that we gather high-quality data on people who have been vaccinated. If you want to figure out if a vaccine is causing a disease or not, essentially what you have to do is know the baseline and then show that once the vaccine has come in, there is an increase in the numbers of people with the condition that you are studying. If there is no increase over the baseline, it's unlikely to be a risk. But first you have to understand what was there before <laughs> so that you can say what came after was really a change. I think it would be fantastic to have a vaccine that gave long-term protection, that protected us against all types of uh, coronaviruses. We don't have that yet. So absolutely we need a next generation of vaccines. They're not going to be easy to make. Yeah. <laughs>